great job. I really, um, really enjoy hearing about this. I learn something new every time I hear you talk about it. Um, in the Q&A, uh, Mike did ask a question about the Russell 2 software. He said it can be a bit challenging. And in your classes, do the farmers calculate their own Russell 2 values, or do they get some assistance from your team to do that? Yeah, so um, I mentioned early on in the presentation that the farmers actually need to come to class with those calculations. And at this time, um, these land treatment planners actually work with the farmers to calculate um, the soil loss numbers. Or they work with their soil conservationist at NRCS. And you know, once in a while, they'll, they'll work with us at UVM as well. Um, we have thought about kind of building maybe that into go crop, but um, we I don't think we will <laughs> because it is so complex. Yep. So I assume you've worked with um, NRCS and, and your state regulatory agencies as part of the team on this as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've worked with all of them very closely. Yes. Yeah. Um, there's another question that came up is, so, so this uh, nutrient management program is mainly for water quality concerns with some soil um, health considerations. Is that kind of the main focus with the soil? Having yeah, I, I think that, yeah, that's really an interesting question because I know that um, people ask that a lot and, and soil health really goes hand in hand with protecting water quality and it's really built into nutrient management planning because um, we're not really we're not just talking about how much fertilizer to give crops we're really talking about improving rotations um, adding organic matter you know grow, using cover crops and reduced tillage and I think you know sort of the beauty of the class is it really gives you this opportunity to focus on on that aspect in particular i mean we have a whole um you know portion of the class i mean we're always talking about soil health the whole time through but you know it, it's really a focus of the class overall and you know the connection between soil health and improved water quality air quality you know economics um, and agronomics so I'm, i know not everybody takes that same <laughs> you know, perspective, but we do. No, I tend to agree with you as well. I think the, the soil health is a really important piece of protecting water quality. And you addressed it to some degree in, in some of your presentations, both you and Lindsay did, but uh, can this program be customized for other states or countries without major modifications? I know you kind of indicated some individual reports could be tweaked, but is it focused heavily enough on your Vermont regulations that it would take a really major update to add like another states? No, actually it was originally when it was first built, yes, it would it would have been really hard to update it, but with some funding that we received, we re rebuilt the entire back end of Go Crop so that it was very modular and we would easily be able to plug in other states. Um, so that is an opportunity and, you know, I don't have an exact cost of that um, because, again, it would really depend on the state itself and how, how complex, you know, I guess their regulations are. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's built to do that and to do that easily. Mm -hmm. Heather, I'm curious. I mean, as a developer, I do some coding and development work mm -hmm. myself, so I was, I was interested to see the, sort of that technical slide that you put up. <laughs> You didn't know anything about. I was like, oh wow, that that's yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, essentially, is this uh, is this open source? Is it fair to call it that? I mean, is the software free if another state wants to take it and do what they want with it, or would they still need to purchase the software yeah, itself? Yeah, you know, we haven't actually gotten to that point yet, mm -hmm. so so I don't, you know, I'm not really sure how to answer. That. Oh, yeah, I know what you're saying. I think yeah. sometimes it's one of those things that okay, this is what this is what the plan is, but until someone actually comes and asks, it's right. And oh, and um, oh. we haven't, you know, we are charging for the software because it um it does cost quite a bit to maintain all of this. You know, you have a mobile side and a website. Oh, yeah. Um, and and so 
I wouldn't say we're breaking even, even at this point. Um, well, I, I sort of wouldn't think you would give, you just give it away either, because even if, well, number one, it could be a profit generator for some other state, and you guys yeah. put the effort up front. So, um, yeah, but, I guess, um, you know, there's a lot of public funding that has gone into it, so it's sure. not something that we're trying to make money off from but we want to keep you know sustain it and keep it going and anybody who's wrote a nutrient management plan knows how complex they really are and how adaptable of software needs to be to handle every specific situation on the farm is incredible i don't think until you get into it you really realize you know everything you need to do to help meet the needs of farmers and i think because we're working directly with farmers we're not actually you know we're not working with consultants per se we hear it firsthand from these farmers what would really be nice and easier for us to use if you could do this sure. um, or it would be really convenient to use in the field if the buttons were bigger mm -hmm. or you know i can't see this in the tractor mm -hmm. so i mean all of these things and having that close connection to the farmers is helping us build a tool that's meant for them and you know anyway so we're hope right. <laughs> hope it's successful well, i may follow up with it just again working at yeah. each and i mean you know a lot of this stuff is sort of what we we do and so yeah. we'd love to Absolutely. you know if there was an opportunity to, to work with y'all in some way that that may be um something we could chat more yeah. about yeah i'm getting the sense that you're open to working with others just have absolutely the right absolutely. way to make sure it's it's uh, sustainable oh yeah we would really love to have other states use this tool you know it, it's really good that first state you know that first state that does it too that's when you really start to find out you know how flexible maybe the back end and the the different parts are as opposed to okay yeah when we built that piece it was really just for vermont other states don't don't do it that way so mm -hmm. yes yeah and we've got a couple of um a couple of other questions here um have you followed up with farmers that took the course and if so um what percentage have continued with doing their own nmp well, um, from the first class that you saw sitting there in 2006, um, those, are, those farms were all, with the exception of one, MFOs. So they were required to complete their plans. And half of them have continued with it since that time. Um, and as regulation has become a bit tighter, um, some of those farms have continued on with consultants. Um, Overall, we do have, I didn't really get to get into this, but we do have update classes that we hold. So any farmer that wants to continue to update their plan yearly, um, we hold sessions for them to come in every year and we help them through that process. So the exact number at this time, I don't actually have. Okay. And I think some of it's because it's evolved so much, even in the past couple of years, it's been able to keep people you know, difficult to keep people going. Yeah, and then I see, Heather, you had answered one in the Q&A already at, about your documentation. Does it provide the equations on how you're handling the inputs to come up with yes. the NPK balance and the losses? And Heather did answer that, that it's in the manual and the resource materials, and I assume you find that on the GoCrop.com yep. website. Um, and I can put up the, the course manual. You'd more likely find it in the course manual. And all the calculations are based on the Vermont nutrient recommendations for field crops, and I could share that link too. Excellent. Yeah, if you put those in the chat or we can make yeah. sure they're in the webcast archive as well, um, that would be, we'll make sure that we can help people find those as well. Yeah. And then a question from Doug here is, if another state agency wanted to utilize Go, Go Crop, what steps would you need to do? And this, and he's saying it's from Minnesota. And I yeah. assume touch with you is step one yeah absolutely just get in touch in touch with me I think we're at that point now where we're really ready to you know work with with other places other states um, that might be interested okay hey, Heather, I was gonna ask about the the classes you, you talked about holding have you tried a virtual have you thought about doing those virtually or just just the nature of the class yeah well you know we have actually done them virtually um, Farmers hated that, but yeah, really. <laughs> but we have done it, and we are we just applied actually for another grant to be able to um, develop an online course, especially for some of the real small farms that will need to meet regulations. 
and, and probably maybe don't need as much assistance to go through the process. Okay. But that's definitely on our mind for sure. Excellent. Then there's a few uh, technical questions here in the chat on whether it's Mac and PC compatible. I assume it is. Well, the web app is, both. yeah, the web app is any, the anything at all. The web, um, web app. Yep, but the, the mobile app right now is, is an iOS only. Um, no Android on the mobile. No Android, but you can actually use the um, web app on a mobile device as well. But the goal of the mobile device is only for record keeping. You know, it, it wasn't meant or designed to be a place to develop a nutrient management plan. It was meant to be in the tractor with you um, or in the field where you could view what you're supposed to be doing, you know, what was in your plan, and then you can keep records as you're actually doing it. Um, so, you know, that's kind of the difference there. Excellent. And then. Um do you have online tutorials or online resources on the program? At this point, the only online resource that we have is the actual manual. And um, but as far as you know, tutorials on using GoCrop, no. But the manual actually goes through it step by step. And we had a complaint once from somebody that said they were so disappointed that the manual was exactly like the class, <laughs> which is a funny thing to say. But anyway. <laughs> So, so if you read the manual, yeah, it'll be like you're sitting there. <laughs> and then the question on the software being virus protected, I assume that virus protection is usually more on the side of when you download it. Um, exactly. Yep. I know you guys have had taken a lot of care to make sure that you're you're keeping your side of things secure. Or trying yes, to make absolutely. Yep. And that, of course, you know, as we built this with farmers, has been a major concern of theirs, especially. You know, many farmers are, are not, um, you know, maybe very computer savvy and even understanding what a web app is, um, is, you know, has been difficult for some of the farms that they can't, you know, put it on a flash drive and bring it home with them or put in a CD. Um, and so it's taken a lot of education uh, for our farmers to feel comfortable putting their information in the cloud. Um, and, um, and we are where I didn't put this in the feature, but right now there is no um, sort of portable format for all the data that's in there. And we, that is a priority of ours um, so that if a farmer wants to get their data out, they are able to do that in a format that someone else could use. So we are working on that. Excellent. And then there's a question here from, uh, from Laura asking if you were looking to adapt it to be uh, more useful for vegetable farms as well. Yeah, I mean, that's our goal. We have um, applied for a couple of grants um, to be able to, to do that. But, um, you know, we have to, you know, rely on grant funding to kind of update these things because we're not generating Boku dollars <laughs> on selling it. So, right. <laughs> so yeah, as, um, and there's a lot of interest, you know, from the vegetable farm community for sure. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Excellent. And then I see Carl asked if there's any YouTube videos on the program use, and, and I, it sounds like you don't have anything like no, that quite yet. Not at this point, no. Yeah. Although our developers have been after us for years, actually. <laughs> but um, ha unfortunately, hasn't been a huge priority. Right, I was going to say, as, as a developer, training and documentation are the, the, yeah, the right. most I not know. fun things that, that there are to do. So Yeah, so, but we're yeah. getting there. Yeah, and, and if a user's on Wi-Fi, the program should work just fine as long as they have a decent Wi-Fi connection, I'm assuming. So for the web application, right, you have to have Wi-Fi. You have to be connected to the Internet. The mobile application has actually been designed to record and hold data even when you don't have um, service because if you live in Vermont, you know you never have service. Um, and so we actually designed it so that farmers could keep their records even if they don't have service and it's saved on their device until they come into range when at that point the information from the mobile device moves, you know, to the web app. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I, I know you work with a lot of organic farms quite yep. a bit and so you use this program with them as well? Yeah, I would say over the past um, probably three years it's about 50% organic producers that have come through the class each year. 
Um, and that number continues to increase and, and they absolutely love the class um, and get a lot out of it. And I think the nicest thing that they've realized is that the records and the plan meet all the needs that they have as well to report to um, the USDA um, National Organic Program. So it, we've had a lot of farmers adopt Go Crop because of that. <laughs> well, that's excellent to hear. Yeah. And then there was one more question on can this program be applied to vertical farming in urban areas? And it, it sounds like you really have it as fairly adaptable to apply to a lot of different farms. Yeah, I mean, right now it is um, very much livestock focused, We've, but we have had a number of, um, you know, sort of row crop farmers come through the class and use the tool. Um, and, you know, we've had a few kind of very diversified farms as well that do have vegetable operations and small livestock, but no vertical farming yet. <laughs> but who knows? Yeah. Just a matter of time, I'm sure. Yeah, yes. <laughs> if we could keep up with all of the ideas that we have, it would look different than it does today for sure. <laughs>